Alright, so The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1 is coming later this weekend, so let's review the movie that kicked off the series. And possibly one of the most hyped up series of recent years. Okay, so The Hunger Games. Now, I will be talking about this movie spoilers and all, so all you guys will get caught up because everyone and their mom is gonna go see the third movie. So just a little reminder before you watch this review. The Hunger Games is a movie that came out in March 2012, and it stars the very talented Jennifer Lawrence as Katniss Everdeen. She, along with her family, live in a place called District 12, which is basically the lowest shit part of the world. They're poor, they're very dirty, and they struggle for food all the time. You look at the place and you're like, Damn, you guys have it tough. And every year, the high-class government called the Capitol hosts an event where they take children from ages 12 to 18 from every district and have them fight to the death called the Hunger Games. The day where the Capitol comes to District 12, they choose Katniss's little sister, which then makes Katniss volunteer as tribute. So Katniss, along with a boy named Peta, have to play the Hunger Games and survive in order to win. Now, to be completely honest, when the movie first came out, I didn't even want to come near it. Since Twilight just finished during the time, high school girls were looking for a fallback, and that was the Hunger Games. And I got jacked to see the movie because at the time, I was dating this one girl who read the book. She kept saying how amazing it was, and she's like, let's go see this movie and I'm like, ah, oh, shit. So I saw the movie the week it came out and still to this day, I thought it was alright. Cause first you have Jennifer Lawrence as the main character and I thought she was a really good Katniss. Despite everyone saying that she was too fat for the role, yeah, I heard that in the theater I was in. I was like, really with that shit? Come on. I actually really like Katniss because she was tough. She's not really a girly pushover, but most importantly, she was awesome with a bow and arrow. You see her in action, it made me say, yeah, she is the female Hawkeye and would be a great addition to the Avengers, my friends. As for the rest of the cast, Josh Hutcherson as PETA, he does a good job as well. He is actually a bakery bread boy and in District 12 that's considered rich since bread is like a necessity. And since he's rich, he's not really a fighter. He's actually kind of a wimp. Elizabeth Banks as Effie Trinket was good in the movie and Stanley Tucci still proven he has the whitest teeth that cinema has ever seen. Take a look at his teeth. There's like rays of light coming out of them. But the supporting character that surprised me in this movie is Haymitch performed by Woody Harrelson. He won the Hunger Games before as a boy but now he's a man assigned to train Katniss and Peeta. He's just this crazy drunken slob and you can't really blame him because he's had his fair share of seeing shit from the Hunger Games he's played. Either way, awesome cast in this movie. Now I remember watching the Hunger Games and I'm like, this is a pretty interesting concept. It's sort of like if Big Brother actually took over and made kids kill each other for the sake of hope. Cause that was the whole reason of the actual Hunger Games and I thought that was kind of stupid. But this movie's directing gave me a massive headache because it was all over the place. There was only like a few good still shots. It's always as if the camera was moving in all directions and there was major shaky cams, my goodness. Especially the Hunger Games scenes where they all start killing each other, you see them all running and the director's moving the camera like he has Parkinson's. Ah uh, yeah, dude, please stop. And I know this is a movie that came out in March, so it's pretty low budget and it is an intro to a series, but the costumes weren't even that great. They didn't have any grit to them, it's as if something was really missing. And the Capitol Guards, they didn't feel threatening, they looked like a bunch of goofballs. However though, it was really cool how the Hunger Games itself was set up. It's televised, it has sponsorships, and Haymitch is training Katniss and Peeta, and he's actually given some pretty shitty advice. He's all embraced your imminent death, and there's really nothing I can do to save both of you. Katniss and Peeta are like, why are you here? And Haymitch is all, Refreshments. Oh, what an awesome character. He's kind of a dick too. But for a televised event and in a game where everybody wants to kill you, you want everybody to like you in order to survive. You get certain perks during the games based on your sponsorships and likability, and this is the part where it made me go like, Holy shit. It's a mirror image of how celebrities are today. If people like you, you're gonna stick around longer. If not, kiss your ass goodbye. I thought that was really cool. Plus, when Katniss and Peeta arrive at District 1, they are treated like royalty. They're basically celebrities at this point. I mean, why not? It's the least the Capitol can do since they're about to die soon. So when the Hunger Games starts, that's when Katniss and Peeta put everything to use that Haymitch taught them. However, not too many people like Katniss, but they like Peeta since they look at him as a boy who's in love. Smart kid. Even though he's actually 
actually in love with Katniss. I'll get back to that later. But when the game starts, all the kids, they're all dying. They're getting slaughtered. PETA goes with the group of assholes and Katniss ends up being by herself. That is until she partners up with a little girl named Rue, and which is good for Katniss because it, she reminds her of her little sister. You catch that shit? I almost caught her in it. Katniss's loneliness comes again when Rue gets a spear to the chest and yeah, she dies. Katniss surrounds her in a white flower bed, totally symbolic, and she turns around and finds a camera and then she throws up the hope or peace sign. I think it's the symbol of hope, which basically leads to the people saying, yep, it's time to fuck the capital up. And they do, it's the beginning of the revolution. Now when Katniss and Peeta meet again, Peeta is badly injured and they end up in this cave. Which at the time this scene was talked about a lot because the book did it different apparently? Cause the girl I was dating kept talking how the movie was different from the book and scene after scene she was saying, uh, the book was different, that's not how Katniss gets the Mockingjay pen. Oh my god, shut the fuck up. She looks identical to Jennifer Lawrence so I guess that was alright. Now the cave scene, I thought that was okay because it showed the characters where they stood in terms with each other. Peeta is actually in love with Katniss, but Katniss is just doing it as an act. So she puts on a show to make it look like they are in love because reminder, it is televised and the people look at them as the new power couple. So it's the last moments of the game, everybody is dead except for Peeta, Katniss, and that one blonde douchebag. They have their final battle on this big machine, but before Katniss and Peeta get there, they get chased on top of it by these badly CGI creature dog things. And that's not really the only time you see bad CGI, the, the creatures didn't look all that great. Again, what do you expect from a low budget March movie? And during the final battle, Kato, which is the blonde douchebag, grabs a hold of Peeta and when do you think he's about to die? Katniss raises her bow, fires the arrow, hits the dude in the hand, and he falls down and gets his nuts torn off by the dogs. Yep, he's dead. You die from that. And just when you think they won, the announcer over the intercom says, oh yeah, remember the rule where we said that the two people from the same district, they can still be victors? Well, um, yeah. That rule no longer applies, so, uh, have fun killing each other. Katniss and Peter said, yep, screw that, so they grab poisonous berries, and when you think they're about to commit suicide, the announcer says, STOP! May I announce the winners of the 74th Hunger Games? Yeah, they win! They get to live! Except for the game maker with the Iron Man beard on steroids, he gets sentenced to death, and President Snow he gets pissed off. And that's really how the movie ends. And sadly, the movie's ending wasn't really much a surprise to me because I knew that Jennifer Lawrence and Josh Hutcherson were gonna return for the new ones. However, though, the acting was great. I really do believe this made Jayla who she is today. A ginormous superstar with nudes all over the internet. Hey, before you hit that dislike button, you saw those nudes too. Don't lie to yourself. The concept was very interesting. There was a few problems I had with the story. Special effects, the CGI, and the directing, not all that great. Mostly the directing, those shaky cams, headaches. But if this movie was still in theaters, I say it's best if you see it at the $2 theater. Just wait till President Stone comes into play in the next one. He plays a bigger part in it. Have you guys seen the original Hunger Games? What did you guys think about it? Leave a comment below. And as always, you can keep in contact with me through Facebook and Twitter, but in the meantime, I have to get going.